Welcome back, everybody, to the Philosophy of Art and Science podcast. As always, if you support this program, you can sign up for the newsletter at aksum.substack.com. That's A-K-S-U-M dot substack.com. You can also go to patreon.com slash tawahado. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash T-E-W-A-H-I-D-O. Today, my guest is my brother, Abel. He is a young Eritrean brother who thinks differently on political matters. We had a Ethiopian on the other day that was uh, saying a lot of nice things about Joe Biden, and I'm super committed to intellectual diversity. So today I wanted to talk about libertarianism with you. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's great to see a fellow uh, Habesha libertarian. So yeah, because yeah, you know, a uh, very, very breed. Yeah, it, it's rare. So I know actually a few Ethiopian ones. I think you're the only Eritrean one I know. Um, and we could get into that um, later because that's a whole nother area of, uh, of politics. But um, I, I, you know, there are nation state differences, but I don't think there's a huge, you know, when you look at uh, intellectual traditions, religious traditions, cuisine traditions and language, there are so many kind of historic bonds and ties that I, I don't think it's a huge significant factor that would um, lead to having like a different uh, political mindset in the in the American setting. But to, to kind of talk about that point you're saying about the, the rare breed, just looking around your family, um, friend groups that, you know, would be, let's say, Eritrean or even Ethiopian, what, what would you say are their general politics? And, and does it matter if they're from back home or here or if they're, you know, male or female? Uh, no, none of it really matters because I feel like everybody has uh, different life stories. I do feel like most Habesha people, whether it be Ethiopian or Eritrean, were, uh, they're probably mostly Democrats which I will never understand why. Okay, so so that, that's, that's an interesting point I want to get into. To get into that, libertarianism um, has been used in a lot of crazy ways. Trump has called himself libertarian. Um, some, people, some people on the progressive sides have said libertarians are the ones running the country right now. And, and some of those things, they, they surprise me because it, it reminds me of the Great Princess Bride film where you have the line of about the word inconceivable. And they say, I don't think you're using that word in the right sense. So could you give us a sort of your take on what is libertarianism? And I know some people in the community make a distinction between capital L and lowercase l. I don't know if you do as well. No, I don't really, I don't think it really actually matters. I just put it in quotation marks for those who like to pretend that they're a libertarian, like Caitlin Bennett, who I don't think is one. I call her a cray for pay, to be exact. What does that mean? Like, she, she saw stuff for attention. Mm -hmm. In fact, I got blocked by her Liberty Hangout account, if you remember. Oh, wow. She, she's the gun-toting gal, right? That was in, yeah. Uh, was she in Ohio, or where was she at? I, I, don't, I don't even know. I Honestly, I don't care about this woman. Yeah. So but that's yeah, more um, of a I conservative just... per pretending to be... Um, would you say a milk toast conservative kind of pretending to be libertarian because it has more street cred maybe? I guess so. Yeah. People yeah, so, libertarians and conservatives have a lot in common. So how, how would you differentiate? Um, because that's another thing is I, I know some progressives look at libertarians and just say, Oh, um, these are conservatives who are just cool with weed. Like how would you differentiate? How would you define libertarianism, especially differentiating it from either conservatism or progressivism i think because the thing is with libertarianism um we just want to do away with all kinds of regulations uh whereas uh when it comes to conservatives they're against regulations on the uh more fiscal side but when it comes to social matters that's where uh they think regulations should be like uh for example conservatives are pretty pro-life I, I i don't i don't i never heard of a pro-choice conservative aside from Tommy and um, progressives, they are libertarian on the social issues, but they're not libertarians on the fiscal side. Yeah. So I guess that's uh, ideally, unless, unless we, uh, you know, break down the people. So I've always found it interesting, you know, 
you have someone like Joe Biden who wins the Democratic nomination and you have someone like Bernie Sanders in the party as well. Who who's more progressive? <laughs> the one that got the most Democratic votes or the one that has a, a particular ideology? Because it seems like people use the term differently. Um, sometimes they throw the term liberal in there too. And, and I've seen people use the word liberal and progressive differently. You have any thoughts on the the idea like within kind of the democrat party let's say uh a progressive or a liberal do you differentiate those are those synonyms um no because i feel like a progressive uh fights for things like a 15 dollar minimum wage and medicare for all and i haven't seen uh, joe biden uh support that especially even when he was vice president with uh barack obama i would say that bernie sanders is uh more progressive and uh, I would, yeah, I would say Bernie Sanders is more progressive. Uh, someone like Ralph Nader, if you remember him, is yep. more progressive. Um, I feel like with Democrats, they're kind of a little bit more conservative. So yeah, Ralph Nader, I, I agree with that. And and I think some people would take offense to that. But I, I agree with that analysis that in some sense, you can call you know Joe Biden a conservative in terms of looking at the record, especially like the 1994 crime bill. And, and we'll get into that. But you um yeah you mentioned Ralph Nader he he used to be Green Party, and he was good friends with Congressman Dennis Kucinich who ran in two thousand eight. I actually worked for Dennis Kucinich in um, in two thousand eleven in Congress, and my big thing was foreign policy and then domestic policy regarding the war on drugs. He was great. Um, I originally was you know vying to get a Ron Paul gig or a Justin Amash gig. I actually met Justin Amash at a subway, got to shake his hand back then in 2011. It was great in DC, but they didn't have any opportunities. And so I was going down and I was like, well, who can I go with that is big picture the same? So the reason I was asking about the capital L lowercase L is some people talk about being a libertarian capital L as in a member of the libertarian party, like an active member of the libertarian party votes libertarian kind of down the line on the ballot versus maybe having libertarian views, but trying to get those passed in one of the two established parties. So on the Republican side for a long time, you had Justin Amash, but recently, you know, he became an, an independent. And I think that's, I would, I would say, I don't know if you'd call him a conservative. I would call him libertarian for sure. And um, I, I know you're a fan of Thomas Massey as well and Rand Paul, and those people aren't working through the Libertarian Party. What do you what do you think about using the Republican Party versus using the Libertarian Party? And is it possible to use the Democrat Party to do something similar? Um, you probably can't really use the Democratic Party because their thing is always bigger government. So um, I don't know if Rand Paul would have ever gotten elected as a Democrat. I actually think even though uh, it's very hard to get elected as a third party, uh, Rand Paul's chances with the Libertarian Party getting elected as a member from there would be better. Um, you mean for I the presidency or, or being in the Senate? Uh, you know, either. Because he, if Rand Paul was to run as a Democrat, he would never get the nomination. And and how about um, Thomas Massey and um, and Justin Amash? Would you would you call Thomas Massey a libertarian or a conservative? And and what would you say about Justin Amash? Um, I say uh, both Thomas Massey and Justin Amash are pretty libertarian. Um, I know that uh, Thomas Massey spoke on abolishing the no knock raids in his campaign against. Uh, Who's that guy again? Is it Todd McCarthy or, or whatever? What I'm not name? familiar. Yeah, I don't. I'd have to look it up. But um, Thomas Massey and Justin Amash have always been frequently uh, voting against spending bills and blowing up the national debt. So yeah, I would consider them to be libertarians. So, I think it's not a stress, uh, a stretch, to to say you're black, right? We're 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 yeah. members of the Horn of Africa, but we self-identify as black. We're not African descendants of slaves, but we are in the United States. We're treated as black, certainly, um, by a lot of people who are less discriminating. And I think we, you and I have both grown up identifying as black. You've even used the, low, the label pro-black, which I would also use. And I, you know, I'm proud of it. I've never been ashamed of my blackness. Um, one of the things people say, even Joe Biden himself, the Democrat nominee, said, and I quote, 
if you don't vote for him, you ain't black. <laughs> how did how did that make you feel? And what what is it that makes you pro black and yet not a significant of the a significant of the Democrat Party? Um, I just really want to try to encourage a diversity of thought within the black community because every single time you see a black conservative or a black libertarian, they're often called coons or Uncle Tom. So I just want people to know that um, you're okay, it's okay to think differently. Um, I feel like Joe Biden kind of says that because uh, the Democratic Party has always gotten a black vote for decades, like at least 90% per election cycle. Yeah. And, and Which, do you think there's a, a sort of justification for that? So maybe 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 on an individual level, certain people have, you know, abused that. But is there a general leanings? Would you say over that kind of decades time that you're talking about that that generally it seems that the Democrats have made more outreach to black people kind of specifically than the Republicans? Yeah, I would say that the Democrats actually um, they do a better job of outreaching because I always see Democrats in my neighborhood trying to get me to register to vote. Um, the Republicans, I don't, I don't remember ever seeing a Republican asking me to sign up to vote. Um, the Republicans do a horrible job; they ignore the black community. Um, I do think that at least Donald Trump has actively uh, tried to make a concerted effort to outreach to the black community. And I think it's decent, but I mean, the Republicans need to step up and do better because the I don't see color crap isn't gonna work. What do you, what do you mean by that? Can you elaborate? Uh, Cause the Republicans love to say, well, I don't see color. And then they have these talking points of like, the Democrats are the most assert the KKK. Like that's supposed to make black people get off the Democratic party and get to the Republicans. Yeah. Or, so. Uh, Go ahead, blacks go ahead. don't blacks don't have to vote Democrat or um black unemployment this or black unemployment that even though black unemployment has been going on uh since the last decade yeah so so the kind of major debates you see between generally Republicans and Democrats conservatives and progressives although you see some people who identify as those things who step out has been equality versus equity, right? And equality is supposed to be a stand-in for equality of opportunity under the law without regards to protected classes. And the other instance being equality of outcome, which they've been uh, reframe, reframing as equity. In fact, one of the measures, I'm in California, and one of the measures on our ballot, because we have a direct democracy, which is kind of unique amongst the states, I don't think it's totally unique, but it, it is certainly not the same in every state. I know I've lived in, uh, in a couple other places. I've lived in D.C. and North Dakota before. And in California, sometimes you get to overstate, uh, overturn the, the state statutes. And so as it stands, California law has these protected classes, right, like race and, and sex and religion and things like that. And on the ballot now, is a measure that a lot of people on the progressive and Democrat side are supporting, but not everybody, which is to say, uh, we want equity rather than that. So we want the state to be able to discriminate based off of protected classes to right the wrongs of the past, as opposed to trying to level that out by having the state be colorblind. Am I understanding you right in saying that there is some level of um, you know, c color seeing that you would like the state to do, or do you, you'd rather the, the, you know, justice be blind, so to speak? Um, the justice be blind, um, equality of opportunity should not be like a quality of outcome. I mean, if, why should everybody get the same outcome if some people worked harder to get that outcome than others? Yeah, so so when you say that the Republicans are are being colorblind, like they have some colorblind crap, how how do you think? Uh, let's say let's say they hired you to be like a strategist or something, which would be awesome. Um, you know, uh, we could set that up if anybody's watching who wants to do that. But <laughs> and if you're willing, but if they if they had um, if they wanted to listen to your voice and you had their ear, 
how could you inform Republicans and conservatives to be more conscious of people of color? Um, I think that they need to show exactly how do smaller government policies help the black community. And I would also think that it would help that they stop promoting these grifters on the right, uh, such as Candace Owens and Brandon Tatum, who have actively spewed talking points that have been viewed as rather harmful. Um, I do think that some Republican policies are helpful to the black community, like lower taxes. I mean, who doesn't want more money in their paychecks? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I'm sure the other folks just uh will try to say that it's a trade-off for something else, but I'm I'm sure on an individual level everyone would like lower taxes. I remember one of the great moments in in Ron Paul's run when he was uh they were they were asking um different Republican candidates for the presidency. I think it was 2012, but it might have been 2008. And they said 50% of people, I believe it was like 40K or 50K a year and below salary wise are not paying taxes. How does that make you feel? And all these people were, you know, kind of being sycophants for the rich. And they were saying, oh, you know, this is bad. It needs to be equitable. They need to pay what they owe. And you get to Ron Paul and he almost, you know, he sounds anarchist. He said, oh, we're, that means we're 50% there. <laughs> that is to say he would like taxes at 0%. And, um, so, th so that was hilarious, but is there is there a way in which you would give advice or uh, get, you know, alternatively, if you were the strategist of progressives or liberals on the Democrat side, how um, how they could maybe pitch to people who are re uh, like hesitant in regards to the talk of these protected classes? in the way at least they that they normally do um, so. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know how to do this from a progressive standpoint. Because um, mm -hmm. usually progress, no, I, I, don't, I don't know. Can, can, can that's I fine. Yeah, that's, that's fine. So that, that actually raises another interesting point. W would you say that, because you were saying you don't, you don't see, I mean, it hasn't been done really, although the closest thing I would say are Dennis Kucinich, Ralph Nader, and Tulsi Gabbard, the closest thing to kind of libertarian from the Democrat side, I would argue are, are those three people. And, and maybe, um, God, I'm forgetting his name, he used to be the, the senator, I don't know if he still is, from Oregon. Uh, a few people who kind of took stands uh, against... Wyden? Yeah, yeah. Uh, people who took stands against the wars in Iraq. Uh, Barbara Lee, also in Oakland, uh, for one of the representatives. She was the only no vote, if I'm not mistaken, in the Iraq war. Even... Uh, I believe even uh, Ron Paul originally kind of uh, supported that. He definitely supported the the uh, authorization of the use of uh, military force. Those sixty words that kind of changed our history, and and uh, you know later on with uh, the the Patriot Act as it kept getting renewed. So y you see more of a potential alliance between libertarians and conservatives than between libertarians and and progressives. Because I I see kind of both camps. Like people usually associated with like Mises.org and the Lou Rockwell crew seem and, and, and Tom Woods seem to do more outreach to conservatives. People at Reason Magazine, people uh, involved with the Center for the Stateless Society, um, and people at Cato, uh, maybe I might be wrong about Cato, but they generally seem to do outreach to progressives. Do you, you th you think there should be more focus on the conservatives or just like, you know, depends on the person? Um, I mean, it depends on what stances you are. I mean, if it's like the social issues, like legalizing uh, drugs, um, you know, the, the issue of pro-choice versus pro-life, I think we could reach out to the progressives. But then when it comes to like the fiscal policies of like lowering taxes and lowering the national debt, I would say um, we could reach out to the conservatives on that matter. So you think it's okay. So you, you think it's restricted to kind of fiscal and social. So reversing it, for example, um, you wouldn't try to convince conservatives of socially um, classically liberal positions and then vice versa. You wouldn't try to convince progressives of economically classically liberal positions, which would all kind of be libertarian positions. Um, no, because progressives want stuff like Medicare for all and a Green New Deal, and that's going to cost a lot of money. 
And um, I've heard of other countries um, having stuff like Medicare for all, but they have to pay a lot of taxes for it. So that's why I'm very skeptical of Medicare for all. Um, and conservatives tend to bring religion into it. So I just, I think it's pretty useless. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's, that's a very interesting uh, point of view. So I, that's a big divider. And it made me think of it when you, when you mentioned pro-choice, pro-life, because I think a lot of libertarians are actually split on this uh, issue as well. But th there are some things I think generally probably rules around children and rules uh, around um, uh, pro-choice, which I guess includes children. And to an extent, you know, death penalty and foreign policy. I would say those are probably the biggest areas of disagreement amongst people who who self-identify as libertarians. And I, I would love to see what the numbers are. Yes. Yeah, I'm talking. Oh, yeah. I, I would love to see what the numbers are. Anybody say something for you, let me know. Wait, can you repeat that question? Yeah, yeah. I, I would say that um, I think the numbers are near 50-50, but I have no sort of real study on the matter in regards to libertarians who are religious or libertarians who are not religious. I actually come to it, these ideas um, of liberty and freedom and things like that from a religious perspective, but it sounds like you're saying you come from the, the less religious or even anti-religious. How, how would you describe your, your kind of... Uh, relationship of your views on religion and politics i'm not a very religious person but my parents are or specifically my mom mm -hmm. um my mom normally goes to church a lot more than i do okay and and do you see um you know we were talking about earlier maybe along the lines of gender or sex um but it could also be along the lines of whether someone's from back home in the horn of africa or from from here do you do you use either pro you know religious arguments or anti-religious arguments in relation to the the politics that you kind of try to push or is it is it like not a topic of discussion? No, it's not really a topic of discussion, um, at least around the people I'm with. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I, and I would love to see the the kind of uh, final numbers on it. Uh, as we uh, kind of uh, wrap up and, and conclude here, um, we have President uh, Donald Trump. We have the vice presidential candidate for president on the Democrat side, Joe Biden, and we have as the Libertarian Party, capital L Libertarian Party, Representative Joe Jorgensen. Between the three, do you think that there is um, a Libertarian case to be made for any and or all of them? And which one would you think is the strongest Libertarian case? <laughs> You see, with Trump, um, realistically, he is he has a better chance of getting elected, even though I would say maybe Joe Jorgensen is more of a libertarian. Um, my problem with Donald Trump is that uh, he supports gun control. So that's a huge thing for me. And he said he was going to end the wars, and he didn't. That's right. And he keeps trying to make that pitch, like I said, to libertarians. So do people, do you think it's a better move for people who self-identify as libertarian or liberty-minded or freedom-focused to kind of bite their tongue in their criticisms of Trump and vote for Trump to avoid Biden or to vote for Biden to get rid of Trump to punish him for not having ended those wars and for uh, being pro-gun control in a hypocritical fashion or to just go in a principled matter and uh, vote for Joe Jorgensen, who would probably align on, on paper more with their views. I would say just do whatever you want, because I don't think, um, I don't want to tell people how they should or shouldn't vote. Uh, I feel like when um, people say, oh, we got to vote Biden because he's going to end the wars. I mean, I don't see any evidence of that. I mean, he was in support of the Cassava War that was in the 90s. Um, he was also supportive of uh, the Saudis killing the Yemens and, and I just feel like 
where where is the libertarian case for Biden in any manner that doesn't involve but Trump? Yeah, it's it it seems more in negation than affirmation. Mm -hmm, yeah, like a way of uh, you know that's what people say is punish people at the polls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I I've seen it. The reason I ask you is I've seen it. I'm not just like making it up as theoretically. The um, Reason Magazine, which is a very interesting magazine that I, that I read often, one of the you know, most famous libertarian publications, they did something that I thought was very brave and courageous. And they posted all the at least alleged, we don't know what they're going to do in the actual booth, but the alleged votes of the people on their staff. And I have to go back and look at it, but I don't think I saw a single Trump vote on there. What I saw is a lot of people saying that they're voting for Joe Jorgensen. I saw some people say that they were voting for Biden. And I saw some people who said that on principle, they don't vote at all. So that was a fourth option that I, I didn't even uh, mention as well. Is there is there any merit in, in your mind to choosing not to vote? I know, especially in the black community, a lot of people try to peer pressure us to vote, um, saying, you know, you have ancestors or if not direct ancestors, like in, in yours and mine case, we don't have direct ancestors, but uh, people akin to us in a closer fashion, more recent Africans we can say, um, who have died for the right to vote. And I've seen, you know, more independent minded people respond by saying, yeah, well, they also died for the right not to vote. But <laughs> I, I don't know your your kind of view on the matter. Do you, do you think we should decide whatever we want, but we should vote like not voting is not an option? Or do you include not voting as one of the, you know, options for people to do them in these matters? Um, I can see why people don't vote. I mean, I, I think Joe Jorgensen has pandered a little bit to the left, and I could see why it turns some people off. Um, I feel like nobody's putting a gun to your head to say we have to vote. So, yeah. But I mean, the the Senate and the House of Representatives, they're, they're still up for election too. So I would never forget that because that's just as powerful as the presidency. That's right. So the Senate, the Congress, and then if you're in a state like California, like I am, the the various propositions, which uh, again have have consequence on on the local level. Uh, this has been uh, beautiful, Xavier Yahabelle, Amasagnalo. Thank you, uh, Abel. Do you have Do you have any sort of uh, parting thoughts, or if you have anything to plug, this would be a great moment to to plug things, and uh, um, maybe we could uh, talk Horn of Africa politics too one day. No, that's it. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you so much. All right. Bye.